Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges, and joining me today is four-time world champion, two-time Olympic medalist, James Guy. James, how are you doing today? Hey, Coleman. I'm great. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing, I'm hanging in there. things for you you're you're in bath is that right yes i'm in bath now and this is about this is our i think eighth week back in the pool um so we're kind of back into a routine now we've got two weeks left to go and we've got a three-week break in august so you know what things are we're kind of getting pretty fit at the minute you know feeling quite strong but you know things in the uk are starting to lift up slowly um i think most of the pools will open in a few weeks well i think maybe next week i think so you know, things are starting to get better and better. So right now the UK is in a good place, I think, I would say. Yeah, that I mean, that's great to hear. Uh, so you eight, eight, week eight of training. Um, yeah. What, what's your training group like there? How, how has that been since you've gotten back into the pool? It's been interesting. You know, a lot of the guys, a lot of the guys there, um, most of them aren't part of the national center. So it's been interesting. You know, it's, it's called return to training and it's a selected group of people who are chosen by the British swimming uh, performance director, the head coach. Um, and they are kind of offered a place to train at a national center. Um, Sterling opened up last week or I think maybe two weeks ago now, but Loughborough and Bath are the main centers in the UK. And, you know, it's been interesting. You know, we've got a lot of the guys who aren't part of Bath, but myself, Tom Dean, uh, Freya Anderson, who I live with now, um, Holly Hibbert um kira schloss uh alicia wilson one she's a cow swimmer so she's down as well training in the uk with us at the minute so she's really good um leah crisp so there's quite a few athletes you know there's two groups obviously so in my group we've got them kind of, we've, got, we've got them so me and tom dean are kind of doing our own thing you know a uh, good training partner there so we're in, a, we're in a good place mate but it's nice to be back into the pool again really nice what was that first week like after so so what you were out of the pool for probably a month or two yeah it was interesting so let's go back god it was the uh, probably the start of march mm-hmm. and we just came back from australia amazing camp out there did the edinburgh meet you know so i'm really fast in season 146 you know 51 high in the 100 fly heat like i felt really ill that week as well so to, to do them times was, was fantastic and that monday we were told that the trials were cancelled and we were like right okay <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So the Olympic trials were cancelled. The biggest meet, probably second biggest meet of the year, has been cancelled. Like, right, okay, mm-hmm. they're going to pick the team off the world champs team the year before. I thought, sweet, perfect. You know, that's, we're good to go. Yeah. So when the, we were told the trials were cancelled, uh, Dave, our head coach at Bath, my coach, said, "Listen, I'm going to give you the rest of the week off because there's nothing to train for." You know, I'm like, okay, sound. Um, and then that following Friday we were told lockdown was happening in the UK by Boris Johnson. Mm-hmm. So they closed all the pools, everything was being shut. I went, I went back home to, back home to Cheshire, my family home there, mum, dad, my little brother, and I was there. And from the Monday onwards, we were training, doing circuit training, we were doing um, like gym work in our garage, just finding little bits to do. Um, so we never actually, never actually stopped training, but I was out the water properly for about, it was about 10 weeks. It was a long time, really long time. Yeah. And, you know, luckily I have, I had a, like a, a jacuzzi hydro pool put in the back garden. Luckily that was really, really helpful. You know, just trying to just do half an hour a day, you know, keeping the feel for the water and that really helped me massively. So yeah, 10 weeks out of the pool, not doing a main set is, uh, is, is not easy at all. Not easy. Yeah. So, so what was that first week back like? The first week back was interesting. It was, you know, I felt better than I thought it would do. I think definitely keeping fit and keeping strong outside the pool, doing loads of biking, loads of running, the circuit training, the gym. I felt really strong. I was surprised actually how good I felt. And it was kind of a short build up to where we started doing actual main sets. And yeah, we were kind of flying straight away, to be fair. We were in, we were in a good place, which was quite nice. That's, uh, that's so encouraging to hear. And I think, you know, as, as clubs here start getting slowly opening and 
people start getting back in the pool, I think, you know, they're kind of finding, oh, I've, I've, I've still kind of got it, you know? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Go on. I'll, okay, I'll go. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, what was I going to say? You know, like, like you said before, you know, when you have it and you kind of, you keep fit, you keep strong, you never really lose that feel for the water. Um, and like I said to a lot of kids online, you know, there's no rush to get fit, to get fit again. You know, there's no meets for a long time. There's no rush to get super fit again. So, you know, take your time, just build up slowly and then just kind of enjoy it more. Don't be panicking thinking, oh, I'm not going to get fit enough quickly. Like there's plenty of time to get fit. Don't be overthinking things, which is a really important message, I think. Yeah, no kidding. You, uh, for all the listeners out there right now, you're getting a free clinic from James Guy. <laughs> take, take your time. <laughs> no rush. <laughs> Uh, so, so speaking of kids, I want to take it back a little bit, um, to, to some of your swimming history. I was reading up on you before this and okay. so, I did, so I, so I knew my facts and, uh, you know, you, you've been, you've been swimming at a high level for quite, for quite some time, but how, how did you first get into swimming? Okay. So I first went to, well, like as a kid, you know, you have normal swimming lessons. And the main reason for me for that was, you know, and whenever they go on vacation or holiday with the family, it was just to be able to get in the pool on my own and swim. And that, my mom, that was my mum's main focus was that I could just, just to do that. Um, and that was probably like three or four, so quite a young age. And then I joined a club called Trafford Metro, which was my first real club. And I was, I was taught by a woman called Moira, Moira Hampson, she was called. Um, and she got me to swim first. And it kind of progressed, you know, as a kid, you try different sports. And probably around seven or eight, you know, we had, a, we had a meet at, the, at our club called, it was called Point Score, and it was basically how much you could PB by. And I never really could understand it at all. Um, probably nine or 10, a, a guy called Mike Roberts came down from Wales, and he was like, he created this kind of elite group of uh, athletes, an elite club, as you, as you would say. So it was called Swim Trafford, and it would feed off smaller clubs. So uh, Altrincham, it would feed off Altrincham, Sale, Stretford, um, so all these little towns in, in Cheshire and Alston Trafford Metro in Sale. So I joined the club and, you know, this guy was about real graft and hard work. Um, and this was like probably, you know, when I was nine or 10, probably for three years, you know, we did the same sessions every week for three years. Like it never changed. Um, and some of the sessions were, you know, I'll tell you the, the full week now. So this was the full week for a long time. It was Monday night was 12 300s, best average, as hard as you can. Okay. Wednesday was 10 200s. Thursday was 24 100s. Friday, 24 50s. And Saturday morning, 12 fours. And that oh. was that for three years. It, honestly, it never changed. That was it. And like, you'd have the buckets out and think, you're right, we'd be sick, get back in, you know. And his kind of method was, you know, hard work and graft. And, you know, it kind of worked for me. And it kind of, kind of embedded that kind of, you know, basic foundation of, you know, this, this sport is not about kind of doing little meters. It's about putting the hard work in the hard yards in. And that's where I kind of began my swimming career really, you know, back when I was a kid and that's where I kind of started off. So did you enjoy that or did you, did you know, did you find a way to, to make that palatable? You know, I actually loved it. You know, I, I loved kind of getting through that pain barrier. I loved doing the hard sessions, you know, having someone beside you the whole way, um, racing and training. And I think that's just the way I am as a person being competitive. And like, even to this day, my mindset hasn't changed, you know, like tonight was just a 4k aerobic set and you can see myself and Tom Dean, you know, we're picking out the last two reps thinking, right, okay, we're getting quicker and quicker. I'm like, right, calm down now. Uh, <laughs> but you know, that, that kind of, that, that fighting spirit in me has never changed. And, you know, I, as a kid, I absolutely loved doing them sessions. I think that's kind of what, what's made me who I am today. Yeah. So, so when you started racing at a, at a more international level, um, yeah. what, you know, what was that experience like for you? Did you kind of expect that ascension or did that take you by surprise? God, it was interesting. You know, it was around probably 16 was my first kind of Euro like junior European meet and it was the European juniors in Belgium. And, um, I raced in the Fauna free final. I got a bronze next to Gabriel Detti, the, great Italian star, you know, he was in my European juniors, you know, he was an absolute icon. And um, I was the fastest qualifier going and he qualified for the London Olympics. And I was like, I was just kind of getting onto the scene really. But that was my first real meeting to medal there. I think the, the race is on YouTube, actually. It's a, it's a great race. You know, I came back the last 50 like an absolute steam train. Um, but that was kind of the first real meet where, you know, like this is the 
my experience of racing international athletes properly. Um, and obviously the year after, you know, I qualified for the world championships in Barcelona, but, you know, I never thought I'd actually do that. You know, it was interesting having a few like wandering years at 13, 14, um, kind of not being the best athlete in my age group in the country to kind of being 50, 50th and kind of going off scale a little bit. And then coming back to a bit kind of being that kind of James guy, the, the hunter and warrior, um, like, you know, that's what I was called back in the day. But to actually make the team and be with superstars like Michael Jameson, Fran Housel, and people I'd looked up to for a long time, you know, it was, I was the youngest guy on the team in Barcelona. I was 17, the same as Siobhan, Marie O'Connor. And, you know, I was the baby of the team. And it's just, it's weird how things have changed. Yeah. Uh, and I want to get to to how things have changed in a bit because, because I, uh, I've seen your leadership skills on display and they're, they're pretty iconic, but, uh, you know, so, so that first world championships, what did you swim? What, what did you take away from it? Okay. So the trials were in the June and I swam there, the 400 free and 200 free, and I got a bronze in the 400. I was 17 and I went three forty eight one, And I was like, Oh, I wanted to get second place. But the guy who got second was doing the 10 K open water as well. So my current coach at the time, you and Dale and Joel think they were like, he's going to part the phone and you're going to get that shot. I was like, great, sweet. So that was all confirmed. And the two and a three as well, I was 148.2. I qualified, I came third. I thought, great, four by two, team's made. You know, that was my goal was to make that team. Yeah. And yeah, so I qualified for Barcelona and I went in the 400. I went 347.8 in the heat and I qualified in eighth for the final um so just like sneaking in again as always and you know it was my first real kind of senior meet and being next to this is before you know the news came out about Sun Yang being a drug cheat and all this stuff about him like he was an absolute hero of mine I'm not going to deny that seeing him in London his stroke was flawless you know this guy was a star of swimming and to be in the quorum with him before the phone affair I thought wow this is amazing and I thought you know what I'm in lane eight no one knows who I am I'm going to swim my own race. I'm just going to go for it. And I think I turned first at 50, second at 100, second at 200. And, you know, I, I came fifth overall. And I was like, my, for my first world final to come, to come fifth, it was like, you know, the crowd was shouting, they were roaring around. My parents in the crowd, they were all crying. And I was like, this is like kind of the start of, well, this is what I want to be like. This, this is the start of something big. And I thought, you know, I have the, kind of the work I think I can I think I can go all the way here um so later on in the week I had the, the four by two as well I we made the final I led off and it's the same mentality again you know it was being next being with Conor Dwyer again K- Kosuke Hagino Yannick and Yell, all these big stars yep. um and like I led off the relay 147-1 and PB again British record and it was just, it was just class, you know, being with that kind of caliber of athletes and watching these guys race and being with Lochte in the swim down pole. just, he's like, oh my God, that's right, Lochte. Oh my God. <laughs> like this guy looked up to him for years, you know. I think it was in Athens and, um, and Beijing. I was like 12 or 13. So to be with him in Barcelona, you know, I was, it's like these guys are the real deal. Um, but yeah, what an experience. So, and then obviously after that was the World Juniors, which was a hard meet, but it was good in the end. So World Juniors was a hard meet. Why do you say that? It was interesting because that summer was like the trials for the World Championships. Then it was the European Juniors. I won the 200. So I literally flew out, won the 200 free, won the 4 by 2 flew back, trained for the World Championships, did the, did the Worlds, came back early, and then trained for the World Juniors. So it was a long, long summer. And this, I think the meet was, I think Worlds was like middle of July and I think World Juniors was like middle of August. Mm-hmm. So I still, had like five, I still had five weeks to go. So, you know, coming back off this major world championships, coming back to training, I think, you know what? I don't want to do this now. I need a break. Yeah. So it was kind of quite daunting in that way. Um, but I still got two medals. You know, it's the first time I'd raced Matt Corton, who's a good friend of mine. And I got the silver in the four and a three, silver in the two and a three. We won the four by two. Um, but no, it was a great meet and a great race, great, a great way to end my, you know, world, kind of junior career, really. Yeah. Uh, so fast forward to two years later, you're back at world championships. Um, yeah. can you take us through that experience where, you know, you, you get, you get, you get another 400 free final, you get a yeah. free final and, uh, you know, th- that was a big meet. Of course it was, you know, so the main goal for that meet was to meddle in the 400 free and that was it. Um, 
that was my all my focus was for the 400 and great heat you know I was I was second behind Sun the whole way and I thought you know that felt really comfortable so I thought I've got a bit more juice in there tonight the Australians didn't make the final um I think Mac was ninth or tenth and I thought this is wide open tonight I thought you know what I'm gonna take down Sun and I think we were together the whole way till about 3.15 he took off the last length um but this is when the things start to come out now. Her son wasn't very well liked with the things he was doing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was annoyed. I wanted to win that. And to get silver, though, my first world individual medal. My dad was in the crowd. He was crying again. Um, and you know what? When that race was done, 3.43, and I still think I could have gone faster. I still thought I had, looking back now, I had more left in the tank that last 50. But, you know, that's for a, a, a different time. But, you know, first world chance medal, Joel, my coach, was over the moon and everything we planned and training, it, it worked out. So once that was done, I was like, you know what? That's my meet finished. I've, I've signed out, you know? And the 200 free was a laugh for me because my main goal and main, main focus was the 400 free and the 200 was a bonus. <laughs> so I remember the 200 free heat and I was like, 446-1 and I wasn't even trying. I thought, okay, this is going to go big. Um, I remember I was next to Paul Beedham and Conor Dwyer in the heat. I won the heat. And I thought, right, okay, sound. Literally got out of the pool, wasn't even out of breath. I'm thinking, okay, we're going to bring it on tonight, bring on the heat. Um, I was second into the semis behind Sun. And so I did the semi final. I was the first semi final. I was 145 3. I won that. And another PB again, British record. And the next heat was interesting. Locked, he was in lane one, I think, or lane eight. He was the far side of the pool. And Sun was in the middle lane. He was messing about the first 100, but Lochte turned in 50.7, something really, really quick. Doing his fancy underwater work on his back. And it's, that's the thing is with that, that's really, really fast, but it's very, very taxing. You know, it's kind of, it will take a lot out of you. You know, turning back onto your front, it kills you the last turn, unless you're really, really fit. Um, and he was the fastest qualifier. I was second behind him. I think Sun was probably, I think he was fourth or fifth, you know. Um, so that was a great race. And I thought, you know what, this is, I've got no pressure tomorrow night. These guys have no idea who I am. Um, and these guys, the, they are the, they're the Olympic champions, the world champions. You know, I've not done anything in, the, in this sport yet. In my, so my mind was completely clear. And I was thinking to myself, I said to myself, you know, the day before the final, I was like, imagine if I won that tomorrow night. Imagine if I won that tomorrow night. I got a massage. Looking back at the race, the semifinal, I thought, you know what? I just couldn't believe it. You know, I was just in that contention with that field, being with Lochte again and Sun, Chad Leclerc, one of my one of my best friends, Paul Beedham and the record holder. You know, it was a stacked, stacked final. And there was one person missing from that, and that was Yannick. And I don't think he made the team that year. It was interesting. Um, but yeah, the final came around. I was dead relaxed, dead cool, wasn't even nervous, not one percent. And I just literally stuck to my race plan, and that was just to go out quite controlled, be comfortable build the third 50 and then just come in like an absolute steam train and it worked i knew i'd gone past lochte and you know it, it was weird i remember touching the wall seeing james guy number one and i thought oh my god like i've just i've won it and that's something you know it, it even to state it still hasn't sunk in yet and i don't think it ever i don't think it ever will do you know it was such a big surprise and big shock like we were at dinner yesterday on Saturday night with my best friend and my brother. I'm just saying, my brother was describing the race to me. Um, he'd, he'd had a few drinks. We were just having a chat. And he was like, you don't understand. When the third last the last turn happened and you went past Lochte, mum was crying, dad was crying, I was crying. The phone was ringing. People were coming around with champagne and bottles of champagne. I was like, really? He's like, yeah. So to hear that and thinking, like when, when they touched the wall, the whole house erupted. And... You know, it, it, it's great. And for me to win that title was just, it was such a shock for me. Um, and by walking back around thinking, you are a world champion, you are the best in the world. And you can't buy that. And, you know, it, it was a nice feeling. But then obviously, two days later was the four by two. And I thought, you know what, it's fallen into the pool. And um, I feel sorry for the Americans. I really do. I didn't mean to do that, but it just happened. And I remember, you know what, I thought, I've got no pressure again. We do a two and a three all the time in training. I was had my headphones on, do my own thing. So to my race plan, I just thought, you know, I'm going to hunt him down the last 50. And I thought, if I'm with him at 150 by his feet, I'm going to get him. And that's what happened. And, you know, to be, I think that was the first time GB had won that race ever, I think, or a very, very long time. Um, and, yeah, that was it. You know, it was a great world. And 
my, my second world championships was I was only 19 so to do that I was really really happy with that and it was a great summer as well yeah so <laughs> <laughs> what a great story I mean yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's awesome um I mean so so Brit- British relays have have become you know quite a spectacle at this point it's been really awesome to see you guys you know uh you defended that title in 2017 in the four by two and then you you guys just missed out on the medals in that in 2019 which that heat was such a barn burner yeah. uh and but but then but then you you rise to the top in the medley um is that is a, a relay something that um team Britain has put an emphasis on, you know, since you've been on that team in 2015? It's been weird. You know, we said like back in 2013, when things were changing, it was a lot of, a lot of athletes were retiring. A lot of young guys were coming through and they said, if there's no, if there's a chance of getting a medal, we'll put the relay in. And I think from 2015, you know, we, we basically probably one of our best worlds we've ever had. Um, we won the four by two, we'd won, we came fourth in the medley relay. They won the mixed medley relay. Um, so we were kind of gradually getting better and better. And, you know, the 2017, we, we smashed it again. You know, it was getting stronger and stronger. And I think where before, it, it's weird how things change, you know, where before we were never really in medal contention. Um, I think in London, the boys came fourth or fifth in the medley relay. And, you know, how things have changed. Like we won the world to see the medley relay and we won the four by two twice now. And, the mixed medley were always in contention. So it's interesting. I think as we've got stronger as a unit, as a, as a country, as a nation, we're definitely in contention now for most relays. I think even the 4 by one freestyle relay, I was in that. I didn't do the 100 free. I went 47-8. <laughs> I'm like, what? I don't do that. And looking at the depth we've got compared to yourselves and the Australians, like, you know, it's just a different caliber. Um, where most most of the Americans, you know, you guys will probably change three, maybe two or three guys. We have the same team usually from the heat in the final. So, you know, if I think we can probably medal in most relays, I think at the games next year, definitely. Um, but no, we're 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 only going to get stronger. There's some young guys coming through, and I think we're, we're going to do a good job. Uh, so so last last summer at the World Champs, I think that's the first time America has ever lost in a head-to-head battle i know in the medley i know the u.s has been dequeued but yes I, in Barcelona. Been, I remember that one yeah yeah but i don't <laughs> think they've ever been beaten and you know just just someone went faster um, yeah is is that in, in that relay was that something that you guys you know had in mind not necessarily being the u.s but you know being number one winning that relay um is, is there a history there for you guys in terms of trying to get to the top Honestly, no, it's never, I don't think so, no. Um, I'll tell you how confident I was before that race. I didn't bring my medal ceremony kit. I, kn- I didn't think we were going to medal, and that's the honest truth. I didn't bring my medal ceremony kit. Uh, I thought, because on, on paper, it looked as if we were going to get fourth. And I was like, or oh, maybe even sneak bronze. That was what the coaches were telling us. And I was like, okay, you know, if, if we can get a medal, great. You know, I've medaled in the, in the, early in the week you know the 100 fly was okay 203 was i messed it up a little bit and i should have gone a bit fast and so found that's my own fault and um, saved, saved a little bit too much but you know it, it it was a learning curve and yeah on paper we were supposed to get third i think and like i just thought you know when we saw when i did the when i did the fly leg i think i spent a good solid 50 point you know it wasn't a bad race um but it was like my 600 fly i was tired um and I remember touching the wall and Duncan was, I think we were third with one length to do. I thought, Sam, we're going to get a medal. Sweet. And then I just saw him, just saw his rate pick up. And I'm thinking, I can just see him go past Marazov. And then I'm thinking, Nathan's, bless him, is getting tired. Like He's a big unit. He's getting tired. Mm-hmm. And 25 to go, I'm thinking, I'm still next to Caleb next to me at the end of the pool. And I'm like, oh my God, we're going to win this. <laughs> And I was like, usually Duncan, the last 10 meters, like does this kind of windmill, windmill stroke. And I'm like, why isn't he doing it? And I thought, he's gone past him. And the crowd just starts roaring and roaring. I look at, and then I go over to PT and we just see GB1 I'm thinking, because it, it was, it, the best surprises of the thing are the ones that are, that are most unexpected. And to win that relay was just like, 
um, it's just it was speechless. Like we couldn't believe it. And you know, when we we came around, everyone hugged each other. And I just think, you know, it was a, it was a sign for us. You know, we I think we can go all the way, and we're definitely in medal contention for next year. And it's going to be a hell, it's going to be one hell of a race. I mean, I'm guessing it gives you guys, you know, some confidence at least, or some amount of confidence that, like, you know, you guys are kind of the up and comers. Now, now you've kind of made the ascent to you are, you know, you guys are, are the are the icons on Team Great Britain. But you know, everyone's relatively young. Everyone has room to improve, seemingly. Exactly, and we've said this before. Like, you know, I've not done. I've only been doing fly properly for. Two or, two or three years maybe not for not a lot not a long time yeah um it was one of my best tricks as a kid and there's always room for improvement and my one of my improvements is you know my easy speed my back end everything can be changed a bit um and i think the way i was swimming this year you know 51 8 in the in the heat in edinburgh like i had bad i had a bad belly all week i felt so sick i didn't even want to race that weekend and dave was like let's just see what you've got in the tank so to do that, to do that time, you know, the way obviously Adam's been swimming, uh, Duncan's on form again, Luke Greenbank as well, you know, he's in, he's in great shape. So we can all definitely go faster. Um, the way Petey swims as well in the Medellin Relay, you know, if he can get, pop out of 56 again or 56 low like what he did in Rio, you know, that's 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5 again. So, um, and my 100 fly as well, it's going to get quicker, like 50.7, I think I was, you know, I was tired. Um and I think doing all these really heats, you know, I think obviously Jacob Peters now is coming through a little bit, so it can kind of, we can kind of probably put him in the heats or whatever it is and kind of give me a bit of a rest. And, you know, hopefully I'll be a little bit fresher, but there's always room for improvement. And obviously Luke can improve a lot more on his 100 back. Um, he's got the back end for it, he's just working that front end of the race. So, you know, we're trying to work on our, on our weaknesses and I'm sure we'll get them right for next year. Yeah. Uh, so, so let's, how how often do you, do you do you keep in contact with those guys um, being spread out like you guys are? Um, I probably talk to Adam almost every day. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's one of my best friends, and how I share room, room with him? I've known him since I was sixteen, fifteen. We were on our first European Juniors team together um, back in Belgium, back in 20, 2012, when he had an awful haircut. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was terrible. Um, so obviously, really close with Adam. Duncan the same. You know, every few days. Um, and obviously Luke, Luke trains with Adam. So we kind of talk, you know, it's, it's all through word of mouth, you know, lol, Luke, Luke did a great set tonight. He's on fire. So I always hear things. Obviously Duncan's in great shape, you know, Cameron Curl, one of my best friends, he's up in Stillen now. So I kind of hear how people are doing all the time. So, and obviously, you know, it's, I've known Duncan, so we chat, we chat through Instagram. I've known him for, since he was 14, 15. So, you know, there's always kind of element there. We know we are good friends and like we tell each other things and we, we speak about things. So, you know, we know how people are going to get on. So it, yeah, it's, it's through word of mouth. It, it spreads quite quickly. Yeah. And I think that's, that's pretty cool that, you know, you have, you guys have a unit that's close and familiar. Of course. And uh, yeah. obviously I'm, I'm guessing that helps the relay rapport as well. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is as well, and I think my coach, Dave McNulty, he, he coached Mel Marshall back in the day. And obviously that's Adam's coach. Yeah. So they kind of talk all the time. So we kind of hear how things are doing and, you know, all the kind of the main GB coaches have, you know, they have Zoom calls. Obviously, Stephen T. Duncan's coach um, talks to Dave on the Zoom. So we kind of hear how people are doing all the time. You know, everyone's kind of through word of mouth. Things spread quick, pretty quickly. Yeah. So, so you've gone from, you know, youngest kid on the team uh, at 17 to, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you're a leader on Team Great Britain now. I know that from witnessing uh, the London roar in person and, uh, mm. in ISL, I, I know you were a leader on that team. Uh, what was, what was being a member of London roar like? You know, London roar was class. Are you still here, mate? Are you still here? Oh, yep. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. It just went small. That's all. Um, it was interesting, you know, like London, roar, obviously the first ever ISL, um, to be a captain on that, at the, at the London meet, you know, the home pool, the home crowd, it's something completely different. It's something that's immensely kind of like full on and thrown in your face. It's very, very quick and sharp. And to, and to be with a group of athletes like Kyle Chalmers, Alex Graham, Jeanette Otterson, the Campbell sisters, and the list just goes on and on and on. You meet, you meet new friends, meet new people. 
And I would say, like, you know, after after getting close with these guys, you know, they're really good friends. Like I could say Kyle Chalmers, Alex Graham, they're one of my, they're two of my best friends now. Just because of being so close with them and talking to them and being with them around them all the time, you get to know what people are like. And, you know, I, I speak to Kyle most days, Alex Graham most days as well. And we have our own London Royal group chat. And it's great fun, you know, it's, it's the relays and that, and it's just, a, it's all about being on a team environment and cheering for one another. And, you know, be, to be, part, to be part, part of that first ever ISL league and to be a captain on it was an absolute honour and privilege. And, you know, I loved it and I can't wait to be on there again this year. Yeah. Do, uh, what sticks out most to me, I don't, was, uh, was when you would lead the cheers. Oh yeah. Uh, have 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 you ever been in a team environment that was quite like that before where where you were the cheerleader and everyone was getting really fired up before that session starts like that? Yeah, so in the UK we have we have something called the Arena League and we have that and it's kind of like NC2As but it's not as as big as that. Um it's all the best so it it goes through rounds and it's basically through the team with the most points. And there's, an always, there's always a final. And we'd always do cheers and chants on that. Um, so a lot of what I'd learned from my Millfield school days, kind of being the team, the team captain on that to bring in a chance to London Raw, um, it's kind of something very, very similar. But obviously London Raw is a lot more intense and a lot more kind of higher scale. Um, but the chants are always the same. You know, people get on some people like them. And once we get going, you know, it, it's class. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's really exciting. I'm, I'm, I know I'm stoked for the for the next ISL season. The first one was just so riveting. The production was amazing. Uh, did you did you have a favorite meet in, in the ISL season? Um, probably it was probably um, probably London, I think, or Vegas. I don't know. It's probably between them two. I think obviously London one home crowd. I had all my family there. I had cousins come over. Um, and they were cheering for us, you know, they, the crowd would be shouting, London, London. I'm thinking, oh, my God, <laughs> like, this is all for us. They're cheering for me. And, you know, to to be up there with the Fauna Free, just to get second behind the, the I can't remember his name, Henrik Christiansen, and then obviously the Tuna Fly straight after I got third in that. Um, you know, it was it was fantastic. You know, we had a great meet then, obviously, to be in Vegas to win the 400. Same again, Tuna Fly, it was it's a hard double. It's not an easy double at all. Back to back. Like I hit, yeah. And it was my, I think that was my third meet of, of December. Um, so I was kind of on the fur, on the verge of kind of falling on the line of fitness, just dropping slowly yeah. and to have the 400 free and to fly back to back, you know, it, it was great, but to win that 400 again, it was nice to do that. And you know, the crowd again, and it just being with the team, it, it was just fantastic. And it was so, you know, upbeat for my first ever London Royal meet. It was brilliant. Yeah. So uh, let's let's get back to you a little bit. Um, you have you are signed with Finice. You've been with Finice since two thousand seventeen. Yeah, so I signed with Finice. It was July August twenty seventeen around there. Okay, uh, and so what you know, I think a lot of people they're like, oh, I want to be a pro swimmer, and they don't really, but but what but it's kind of murky on what that actually entails, you know, signing with, yeah. with a suit company like Finice, what has, what's that experience like? What obligations might you have with them? You know, what, what do you end up uh, benefiting from? Um, you know, I signed with Finice back in oh, obviously almost three, it was three, it's three years ago now. Um, and being a part of a small set group of athletes has been brilliant. Um, Tony Irvin, uh, Olivia Smaliga, you know, Cam McAvoy, Lee and Neil, like it's a small group of athletes and, you know, having direct access to CEO John Mix, he's a really, really nice guy. And the thing is, he, he listens to athletes, you know, I'll say I, this is what needs to be happening with, with a suit. And I remember when the, when the first rival came out and we were doing testing, I said, listen, you know, I've, I've been doing this sport for a long time. I know how, to, how I know how a suit, a swimsuit should feel. I know how it should look. I know all the things, you know, I think the best advice you're going to get is from the athletes because they kind of know what it should, what it should look like and feel like. And I've pretty much worn every single suit there is out there. Like all of them, I've tried all of them. Um, and when the rival 2.0 came out, you know, it was, there was some things that weren't right, weren't right with it. And we changed things straight away. I said, this needs to be tighter here. It needs to be longer here, etc. And it was done instantly. And when I worked for the first time, uh, when was it now? It was probably the 2019, around the middle of 2019. 
and I, I put it on in a, in a training training stand up swim, and I, I looked at it, and it was my it was my color. It was had the James the JG on it, and I thought this is absolutely class. Um, the design, the info I've got back from it, the way it feels in the water, you can see the water repelling. It feels light, it feels strong, and it was just class. And that for me is a big confidence booster. Um, and that like there's nothing more confident when you look good, you feel good. And that's one thing I carry with me all the time. I've always had that, had that in my head. But especially on the side of that things, and I think you know the way Finis, uh, Finis, you know they're they're not more, they're not exactly as big as you know the other brands out there. But they're more kind of the thinking side of things, you know. Obviously, the way they think about the snorkel, you know. And for me, you know, I'd rather be with that, like thinking about things properly and have more of a quality product. And that's one they def- that's one thing they definitely got right, and they think about properly. Yeah. What do you remember? What the stand-up swim was when you first wore that suit? I think I, I think I do. You know, it was. I think it was a two hundred three short course. I think I went one forty two something, and that was just at the end of the week. Um, it wasn't bad, to be fair. You know, I'll take that. Um, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. Um, but you know, it was just it, it was this was back before the world, I think or all the trials, I can't remember which one it was, it was probably April time. And, you know, it was just to see what the suit felt like and it felt amazing. I thought, you know, that, that's just, that is the suit for me. That's what I'm going to wear, you know, for the Worlds, potentially the Olympic Games. Um, but yeah, you know, that's one thing is, 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 that they have right, you know, they think about what they're doing, they don't rush things and that, I like that. I like the, what, the way they think about things. It's like being a small part of a family, which is, which is really, really nice. Yeah. So, so moving, you know, to, to kind of wrap this up, moving forward, um, you said you're getting a three week break in August. Uh, what, what, what do things training wise kind of look for you moving forward after that? Okay. So right now we're kind of in like a, the back end of an endurance cycle. So, you know, tomorrow is max kick, short rest swimming, tomorrow night's threshold. It's not, it's not easy stuff, but, um, three week break, you know, shot off, go fishing, see my friends, maybe go on a holiday depends how the COVID COVID virus is is happening all over the world. Um, And then once we're back in the water, you know, it's that Olympic shift again and it's just kind of doing everything a a little bit better. Obviously the ISL in October, November time is going to be a a bit of a part of that going to Australia, hopefully touch wood will be quite nice. Um, But you know, it's, it's Olympic year again and it's weird having that thought, you know what, this is this year's Olympic year when obviously it's finished now, it's a write off, but to go for that mental stage again, you know, I've, I've been doing some really good work. I feel confident, happy with what I'm doing with Dave McNulty, my coach. Um, having Tom Dean beside me, you know, pushing me every day. Um, you, you need that, you know, you need to have someone in training that's going to help you and push you. And I help him as well. So, you know, I'm excited for what's going to happen with Dave and the Olympic year. You know, it's kind of working on the little things just like a tiny bit better than you did last year. If it's your diet, your turns, it can be anything in the pool, outside the pool. One thing you can work on, and that for me is really, really important. It's that Olympic, sh- Olympic shift you make from the year before to the Olympic year. And you know what? I can't wait for that. I lied. I have one more question. Okay. Uh, what's the last question? You, you reminded me of it. Uh, so, so last, you know, in December, January, you guys went on a training trip in Australia. Yeah. Uh, I was seeing PD post all kinds of cool pictures about it. Uh, Give me a little recap of that. Why do you guys go? What's the benefit? Who do you train with? And uh, and what's it like? Okay, so we well, it's, it's different this year. Uh, well, sorry, well, tw- uh, 2020 in January, we just missed PT. So I think Lofka went a little bit earlier than the Bath group did. Um, but we, we were there for four weeks, and it was the start of the kind of um, like the speed and the anaerobic cycle. So all the fast stuff, the race pace. And that camp was amazing. The way we were putting the work in, it was just me and Tom Dean going at it every single day. Um, the heart rate sets, the hundreds fly threshold, um, the, the, the tolerance sets. And, you know, it was just the way we were working, the way we did some stand-ups there. Um, I think it, it was one Friday morning and Dave goes, right, you know, today we're going to do a stand-up swim. And we had the pads in, the proper timers out. Um, I was one forty-seven six in the morning. I'm 52 mid in the evening for the 100 fly, you know, just get up a suit and just see what you've got. Yeah. Um, Tom Dean went 146, 146.5. And I was like, oh my God, like he's going to be a superstar. And you know what, to have that for the four by two next year, if he can do that on a Friday morning and no preparation for it, you know, this is a good, this is, this is a good sign. And I think at the time there, it was the, 
the Australian kind of national team backstroke camp. And, you know, obviously word spreads qu- pretty quickly. They saw it happen and they were like, wow, like he just went 146 mid first talent swim. Um, so yeah, obviously kind of what we're, what we're doing with Dave is obviously working. We're in good shape, but you know, it, it's the way from the, from the UK a bit, you know, obviously around January, February time, it's cold. You can get ill very, very quickly to be in the hot sun training outdoors. It's a fresh environment. It's nice. It's warm. The food's amazing. It's just a kind of a place to go and just train and work your backside off for four weeks. Um, and you know, it, it's just to reset your mindset, I think, and to have that and be around the kind of happy people in the sun the tunes blasting. Uh, I think that's the, the way a lot of Brits work. You know, it's, it's a good environment to be around and obviously Australia is miles away and you know, it's just a good place to get away and just, go give it hell at camp for a few weeks. And that's what I think you have to do over there. You're there to train and that's it. Man, if I could, uh, if I could go on a training camp in Australia right now, it sounds pretty nice. Yeah, it's class. Honestly, if you can come, you'd love it. You'd absolutely love it. It's amazing. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe we'll be able to book it for next year. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. Uh, it's like what, 8 p.m. there now? But... So UK time now is quarter to eight yeah so right. yeah we, tonight we had a tonight we had a uh i had a bit of a nightmare to be fair my um i'll tell you the story quickly so i got to the pool realized i left my swim bag at home so i was like oh no dave was like where are you going so my bag's at home drove home got my bag got back in the car drove to the pool got halfway my car broke down so <laughs> <laughs> not a great monday um and then i got in did a fire and loose and did a 4k aerobic main set it was a 300 off 330 Five ones off 150, 150s off 40, repeated four times. So, yeah. Is just short course? Yeah, just short course. But we were going like three tens, 61s, 29s. Yeah, so it's still not bad, you know, 50 below. We're in good shape, which is quite nice. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's not bad. No. <laughs> Well, I, I'm glad to hear you, you got your car situation fixed. That's yeah, we're all sorted. We just need to put more fuel in next time. That's the issue. There's, <laughs> there's no fuel in the car. Nice. Uh, well, yeah, again, James, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks a lot. Pleasure. Thank you, Coleman. Great time to chat. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.